Yeah, uh, thank you for joining us, everyone. I have Alex Negria with me, and he'll be uh, we'll be talking about his process and his studies and how he got uh, how he kind of accelerated his artistic process. So, yeah, he's here from um, Romania, right? Yeah, I'm, from, I'm Romanian. I live in Transylvania. I'm in the part of Romania that's called Transylvania. <laughs> awesome, just like in the I'm movies. I have artists, full time freelance. <laughs> awesome. So I I wanted to get you on my my YouTube show um, because I I observed that your uh, character your your character illustrator um, yeah, freelancing mainly. correct primarily. Yeah. Yeah, in, in the beginning when I started drawing, I was kind of drawing everything, mm -hmm. but somehow during the process, I kind of branched out only to characters. Yeah, that that's what happened. I think with a lot of us, we kind of find what we really find we're, we're passionate about and what what kind of calls us, and we just kind of run with it. And yeah, and that, that's what I did. Um, the opposite. I, I was I was doing a bit of everything, and then my environments kind of. I got, that's where I got all my intention for, and did that for three years. And now I'm just getting into kind of doing, you know, kind of backpedaling and going into characters now. Yeah. So it's awesome. But your character work is really, uh, it's super detailed. It's clean, and you're you're phenomenal at painting materials and kind of and how light affects them. So I just wanted to get you to talk about how about you. Your, your general process on how you would construct this or, you know, I know you have uh, done a lot of studies in the past, really articulate yeah. ones. So if you'd like to share some of those with us, that would be great. Yeah, well, uh, when I started drawing, I was like, I don't know, I was looking at other people and seeing them like create awesome art and I didn't know how they do it until I found out about this group called Crimson Daggers where they promoted this study routine on a daily basis to improve. So I tried that and it was kind of the best decision of my life because since then I improved a lot and thank all, all things to these studies. So yeah, there are like multiple studies that you can do. Um, these days I focus mainly on line art because for me today, um, Establishing like a shot early on mm -hmm. uh, is possible only. I mean, the minimum requirement is line art. So yeah. I can define the design, the composition, and all the rest, like lighting and stuff. It's just like, I think at, 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 at it, like the cherry on top of the cake, you know? Yeah, it just comes after. Uh, so you draw out the structure, basically. Yeah. Awesome. So. Yeah, I'm going to talk about what kind of studies, like line studies I do. Um, All right. Um, I have here the gestures that I'm doing almost daily. Like I Almost take, daily. Awesome. Like, roughly one hour. And you, um, okay, so you would do like the, a whole sheet like this per, per day, something like that. Yeah. And this, there's this website called quickposes.com. Quickposes.com. Yeah, I'll write that down and we'll include a link. That sounds awesome. Uh, and here you can customize uh, your um, your session, you know. I, I go for time gestures. Oh, that's uh, awesome. I choose what I want to draw. I usually uh, draw both female and male. But mm -hmm. sometimes, like, I mostly receive commissions for females. So <laughs> sometimes I practice only females. I don't get too, too many males mm -hmm. for some reason. Uh, and I go for 60 seconds. And why I do this exercise is to uh, raise my awareness of the movement of the human body. Um, it, when I started drawing, um, <laughs> I, I did what everyone el uh, else was doing, like just drawing that T pose, or like it, it looked like a 3D model, yeah. uh, uh, modeling shit. Um, so this was the way to run away from that and like explore how the human body works because you, you'll never find this kind of movement or uh, the natural way of a body uh, of how a body looks like in those anatomy books. So yeah, these reading, are quite dynamic. Yeah, and it's all from photos. I mean, it's ideal to do them from life, but yeah. since I don't, I'm not a millionaire to pay models. Or I know. I don't really have the time to go to classes Actually, there are not any classes in my town where mm -hmm. I live at. So I, I uh, do this kind of studies. The next best day. thing. <laughs> yeah, this is the ne next best thing. So, yeah, 
Um, so do you usually I, start your day with the, this type of thing or kind of just work yeah, at it throughout the day? Just warm up. I, it, it's kind of hard to start a day with, directly with work. Yeah. So this way I kind of like uh, put my mind on, back on track on what I need to do. Like if I need to do some sketches or whatever. Uh, sometimes I uh, combine these gestures with uh, like hands. Like I draw like two-thirds of the page uh, filled with gestures and then I switch to hands. Hands are, again, like super important, you know, yeah. they have so much emotion and they say so much about the character. So practicing them has like, made me like a better artist. So yeah, I have here. Uh, so do you? Oh, I got a quick question. Would you? Ex I I know you start. You mentioned doing the gesture ones at like about a minute. Would you increase the time when you do the the hands no. or? The no. Uh, if I increase the time for me at least, uh, I end up wasting time because I I kind of know how much time I will have, and I take my time to do shenanigans. Yeah. <laughs> I found out like 60 seconds, it's like perfect to capture a movement of someone. I'm not aiming to draw details. I mean, yeah. this whole exercise is for observing how the human body works. I don't need to draw the uh, fingers or whatever, <laughs> you know? Yeah. I just need to find how uh, I can make a character more believable stance wise, you know? And. Uh, I'm not sure. I call this folder Men Up, <laughs> Men Up Studies. So after this, I would start. I mean, if I have time, I would start like drawing from imagination, just like again, quick poses, like mm -hmm. like this, or or sometimes uh, I posted this on Facebook too. I don't really care about the proportions. I don't care about the movement and like the stance. So these are quick. Like I spend, I draw like an initial pose and then I add some multiple limbs and then you can connect them if you want. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I think this is like a, an important part of like applying the studies that you're doing. Yeah. They don't look really great. I don't do them like often. Um, but yeah, this is like some of them. Yeah, so many hands. I think I saw in your blog what you did. What did you do? Two thousand hand studies in yeah, a month. I spent a month. I wanted to do like the whole thirty days of the month mm -hmm. uh, studying hands, but I couldn't do it. In the last ten days, I was like, oh, can I swear? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, like, fuck it, I I can't do it anymore. It took me like four hours each day to draw one hundred hands. So I was oh, going wow. for three thousand. But yeah, at the end of the month, I was like, oh, I can't do this anymore. I need a break. Yeah, well, talk about uh, motivation and like, you know, self-discipline. Like, I mean, that I mean that's what it took, I guess, to, to get at the level you're at, which is like, it's really, um, it's really high up. I mean, your, your character art is some of the best I think anybody sees out there. Thank you. And, you, and it shows you, there, there's no shortcut around it. You just simply put in the time every day. Yep. Um... And, okay, the next uh, study that I would do, uh, this is like a recent thing that I'm doing. I'm doing, like, I'm opening again uh, armors or all mm -hmm. kind of pictures, and I draw everything, and I start to note down, like, how that object, object looks like, trying to make my brain understand how the things work, like... I no. think, and I think that is just so important. I think, and a lot of people overlook that because when you when you actually write that out, I think it helps your your you know your muscle memory, you know, to to recall how these functions work. If you were going to design your own from scratch, yeah, and also like having them written down and already drawn. I mean, you can look at a picture of how like how much time you like, but there will be things that you will forget. Yeah, like, right after you close it. But having these kind of studies, like. Right now I'm looking over them and I'm starting to remember the stuff that I drew, you know, and why some of the details um, that are there are there and how the things work. Yeah, how you, the armor is like connected, like each part is connected to another one. And yeah, I learned a lot about basic, um, basically about straps and bolts, how you can connect and make movable joints for 
uh, yeah, you can overlook those things while drawing because we're not technical mm-hmm. draftsmen. We just like create fantasy shenanigans. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it, it adds like an extra bit of realism. Do, do you, now, you when you do this type of study, do you just kind of grab, you know, from like Google or anything, any type of like armor photos uh, or? Again, I have, I, I just do this thing, I type armor and Tumblr. Oh, yeah. And you can find like uh, the links that start with www.tumblr.com, they're not good. But the, the other ones with starting with the name that .tumblr.com, those are the good ones. Okay, thank. Th- I didn't know that. So th- yeah, that's awesome to know. So here you would find like gifs or close-up shots for armor. See, like I didn't yep. even know about this blog. The, there are so many people collecting this kind of stuff, like creating this kind of blogs. Yeah. Look at this like crazy design. Look at that busyness. <laughs> that. And yeah, once you start doing this kind of stuff, and uh, you build like a massive visual library, and once you start combining them, you're you're gonna end up with something unique. You know? Absolutely. See, I noticed in your notes you 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 make note of the positioning of things, the structure and the function. Yeah. And I was gonna say that looked like something out of Dragon Age, and yeah, there it is. <laughs> and yeah. Um, after that, uh, I have like other kinds of exercises. Let me see if I can find. I, I I'm not a very like. Here is my man up folder. It's like all like mixed up. And I also like if I study something. Uh, can I show nudity? I, I'm not sure. If yeah, I yeah, that's fine. I, I don't. Oh. I don't have an issue with it. Hopefully, like YouTube or something. Okay. Uh, so if I have JPEGs on my hard drive, I just like uh, like organize them. Like if I need to draw hands, I would like with each hand that I draw, mm-hmm. I take five more seconds to make a selection and put it somewhere in a file where I have multiple hands or feet. Or yeah, it's just good to so, draw upon if you need to actually get a reference yeah, of it for it. This, this is mainly useful when I'm rendering stuff because no matter how much you render, you will kind of, yeah, your brain will uh, flatten some things. I mean, you will remember certain things, but you will end up combining all the rendering styles and lightings that you learned into one kind of uh, lighting and yeah, uh, I guess this like are helpful. Uh, to yeah, especially mind. when you're when you aim for. I think a lot of people don't like any any type of like realistic illustrator or you know illustrators that go for more real realism in the work always has their their photo infer- uh, reference for how the lighting affects you know the the body and stuff because it get just getting it up to that level it, it's really hard if you're just making it up. Yeah. Uh, same here for portraits. Like, I would never come up with a character as cool as this one. Yeah, right. <laughs> this lady is like, oh my gosh, she's golden. <laughs> and that's well, that's what's great about this folder here. I mean, usually if you just um, Google, I think, or general searches has like a issue of just getting up like too many beautiful people. Like that, that's just a that seemed like a much more realistic way of approaching it. Yeah. Um, like the Hollywood style. Here are some quick studies, just like five to ten minutes mm-hmm. to like capture the values basically I, the most important thing when you're rendering something is the values absolutely if you don't have like a strong read no matter what co- colors or lighting effects you put there it's not gonna look right so yeah these are like super quick um i don't spend too much time but i i capture like in my mind the values that i need to use and yeah like this is the size when when you're when painting it, it yeah, I, I don't really care. If I zoom in too much, I will start detailing. And yeah, so they're basically like little thumbnail comps with the. Yeah, and I also point. had like, uh, yeah, here, here is the final product. I I did those two studies and I like combined them into one. Yeah, look at that. Uh, <laughs> that's so awesome. Whatever you want. I mean, once you know the values and the colors, you can yep. combine everything into like something original. And again, this was like, it, it took me longer. I, Probably took me like one hour or so, mm-hmm. but again, I was I closed down all the reference and I tried to paint it like how I remembered it. So I mean, if I don't do this like this um, practice after the study, I end up forgetting most of the stuff. Or there is the possibility that I don't, don't even pay attention when I'm doing the study. 
Yeah, so that's that's such a good way to uh, directly apply what I mean, it, it what you just studied. So it hopefully it'll cement it further in your head. Yeah. Um, also, here I I, did, I I like to do portraits. I mean, if I I'm doing like a portrait, I'm just gonna do the portrait. I'm not mm -hmm. drawing like a full character. <laughs> yeah. I uh, especially when I'm doing after a photo, it's so hard if you're trying to do a portrait that's like low res. Yeah. I, I really need to see all the volumes in there so I can go in there and render. Like, yeah, look at that. Wow. Great uh, great use of texture and light. Yeah. So, so you just probably use what the, the, the flatter, more like the airbru the, the airbrush in the beginning to kind of block out or uh, not airbrush. I don't even know what I'm using. Like most of the time I take a brush and like... <laughs> you just go? Uh, well, yeah. If I look at it um, here, yeah, I use uh, this thing like, you know, when you're painting mm -hmm. me... so you have the round brushes in photoshop i mean i'm using photoshop cc but i think there's also for cs4 or 5 well you have this thing when you alt right click if you drag up or down it will make the brush softer or oh i didn't i didn't know that one either so yeah like i'm in the beginning i'm just fo focusing to draw something that's like blurry uh, it's very laggy for me now but yeah like starting with this kind of stuff it's you, you focus with like the main um yeah the, the, the main... structural po uh, points of the face yeah exactly and after that i can go in there and like make this brush again hard and put some like Mm -hmm. you know, some sharper edges. And also, since we're talking about this, I use also the smudge brush to calm down, calm down the edges. Or... Yeah, blend them And out. again, with this, uh, if you're using like a round smudge, you can use the same trick with making the smudge softer. And let me zoom in. Oh, so it, um, it adjusts its strength. Yeah. yeah. No, no, no. It's it just the edge of the smudge. Oh, See, okay. Like, now I'm smudging with the... Uh, Sharper edge and now with the softer edge. Oops. I see. It's very laggy, the computer for me, yeah. for some reason. Um, so, yeah, uh, let's see what we were talking about the portraits. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, practice, like practicing this kind of stuff makes me aware of how skin looks like. I might catch up some new anatomy information that I wasn't aware of. Um, and lighting as well, right? I, well, like, sometimes I sketch in black and white. This was like a portrait after I did some of those like studies. I don't have them on my computer because I did them in like a s tiny sketchbook. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I was studying these people here and yeah, I painted that dude, dude like <laughs> from what I could remember mm -hmm. from all these portraits. Or, um, so that that last one you showed us was from your imagination, then. Yeah. Awesome. I, and it, once you do this stuff, like for like, if you do it for like one month on a daily basis, this stuff you will knock it out in like twenty minutes. Mm -hmm. it's, it goes super quick because your brain is gonna start to see the patterns. Everything is a pattern in nature. Yeah. Uh, when I did those 2,000 hands, uh, I started noticing patterns for the hands. Let me see if I have some hands here. So I can point a few out. For example, I, I noticed that it's easier to draw the fingers if you're drawing the in-between parts of the fingers or to find these three points here. Oh, the, okay, so the first knuckles. No, not the knuckles, the in-between. Oh, okay, shape. the neg the negative space? Yeah, it's like three <laughs> V-shape shapes, you know? Yeah. One, one, two, three. You're not focusing on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight uh, edges. You're just focusing on like three V-shapes. <laughs> or, I don't know, you learn how the skin bends inside the arm, mm -hmm. uh, inside of the hand, of the palm. Like here you have a curve and then you have another curve here. Yep. It's another V-shape. 
Oops, I pressed. Space. So how long would like um, the finished uh, portrait for uh, Tyrion that you did take you? Um, like two hours. Oh, wow, not bad. <laughs> that is pretty good. And also, like these portraits, um, I, I I recently learned that I cannot draw portraits in line art and then render them. Uh, with portraits, I for an illustration, I would start like this with blobby shapes, mm -hmm. like with blobs of paint instead of line. Because whenever I drew like a portrait in line, if the line wasn't good, I would end up like uh, having disproportions and yeah, it's. When you're tracing a line and you say, okay, I'm going to stay inside of this line, it's going to be so so hard for you to change the portrait so it actually looks better. You're going to focus on the damn line and you're going to be like, no, I drew that line. It must be correct. I, I will stay inside of it. I know, I know what you're saying. I'm the same way. And I, I found that out you know, through a lot of years of <laughs> trial and error. But I, yeah, I definitely learned that most things I need to kind of just block out in value or color. And yeah, I, I my drawing just it messes me like up. It, it's so much easier if I want to like select something, let's say this size, like two up. I just select and move it. I don't care about these edges because I'm gonna paint over over mm -hmm. them anyway. Yeah. But in line art, if you'd have that eye draw through there, like it wouldn't work, you know. Yeah, it it just ends up slowing you down and and yeah, definitely. Um, That's awesome. You got you got such a nice uh, range of um, uh, colors in there. Now you go off of probably like a screen capture or an uh, image from this, but you don't. I'm guessing you don't color pick it, right? No, no, no. Uh, that's another thing. Like you will never learn colors. I mean, you have to train your eye to see the yeah. values. The values are the most important thing. And the way I do it is like, let's say this is the portrait that I need to study. Oops. Where's Photoshop? Okay, so I let's say we're looking at this thing here. I'm just trying to find small shapes like that in a portrait and match the value. So here I see it's a lot darker than the other one. Mm -hmm. So I put a dark value and here I know it's, it has to be lighter than, than this. So I just color pick the colors. I know that it's wrong and I make it lighter. Yep. Now it's too saturated, that means I'm moving it to the left. And that's that's how I match the colors. Mm -hmm. And then you have this like more saturated color, and but it's darker than it this is dark. So I color pick this color because this is the my um, landmark that I that mm -hmm. I took. So it needs to be darker than this one, so I'm moving it down and more saturated. And maybe add more what <laughs> it's so laggy for me, I don't know why. Oh, and yeah. after that, I'm thinking about the edge. Do I see like a transition in this thing? Mm -hmm. No, that means it's like a rounded shape. Uh, it's like a cylinder or, or a um, curved shape. That means I need to blur that thing out. Um, Yeah, so you, what do you, um, you pick, uh, ba I'm guessing you make your first de decision based off the value and then you kind of go towards like the color and the temperature and then, yeah, then you can later on address the type the edge, you know, the edge that you need. Yeah, yeah. exactly. That, that's the, my, my computer is freaking out right now. <laughs> it, it's not yeah. looking too bad on my end anyways. Yeah, but I'm sure it's just like, running slower from Camtasia. And, like do that, that smudging, so mm -hmm. you know, but uh, it's not working, sorry. But yeah, uh, this is how I would think. So for every part of the illustration, I would pick this nostril. So <laughs> here I would, I don't know, here, see, you don't have like a clear cut edge, like let's yeah. say here, when you see clearly there's a, like a line. That means that there is a cylindrical shape and there's a lot you can tell tell about the edges with uh, with your rendering um, so yeah um, but it, we were talking about <laughs> color picking yeah so yeah, I don't color pick I just look at the values so see this is darker than this so mm -hmm. when I, I'm painting this I'm trying to match this area for the nostril on my character too you know Absolutely. Oh, very wide. and with the colors it's, it's just uh, if you can't tell what the color is, 
then it's probably in a gray range or close to grays. Uh, because the grays can give a lot of variation, you know? Yeah. This gray here is not the same thing with this gray, but they have the same value, you know? And yeah, when I look at this, I can somehow tell like, okay, this is like a bluish tint, this is like a greenish tint, and that, just, that's all I'm trying to find out. Mm -hmm. If it's like a warm or a cold color, you know? Yeah. And yeah, if you're looking at something, okay, and this is, uh, I can really tell that that's orange, and that means that that color is saturated, so it's going to go yeah. with that somewhere, you know? So yeah, the, if you're having trouble naming a color, then it's probably close to grays and just follow your in instinct like okay what kind of uh, vibe does that color give to me is it warm or cool and then in the warms you have this range here and in the colds this range mm -hmm. and even if you're not using this so if you're using like rgb sliders uh or let's say hsp because not a lot of people yeah. use that here you have the first part is the warm colors the second part part is the cool. cold colors yeah here's the saturation um uh, like i said if you can't really tell what kind of color is it stick with the grays here but if you can really tell okay that's uh racing green then you go like super yeah excited. and the value is it's easy like if you can see an edge or some sort of transition like a gradient then you have a value change so look what's dark and what's light and that's it and it's break it simple as this and you you'll do like super accurate portraits yeah you can you can always add um you know if you get the values right first you can always go back and add um you know more saturated versions of that color or value like as you progress through the the, the painting so yeah that's a that's a great one there. You so you've got it a lot of the the Game of Thrones cast done. I see on on your DeviantArt uh -huh. now. Yeah, I have a few of these videos on YouTube. Like if you yeah, go to Negra YouTube, uh, you will find. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely include a link to your um your your YouTube page as well. You show some awesome things on there too. Thanks. Um. So okay. Uh. So let's go back to lines. Um. So once I do all this crazy armor studies and all that stuff, I would start practicing them. Uh, I, I started drawing like when I did those exercises, mm -hmm. I kind of stopped right now because I had like some uh, crazy projects, but now, uh, but, but back then I had some time, so I would like draw like a pose and then I would dress it up. Mm -hmm. Uh, so yeah, here I have like a bunch of characters. Awesome. On some of them I, I put like just two or three colors. Maybe I practice some gold rendering and then I would... I, I stop a lot in the sketch uh, stage because I know that I can... If I really want to render it, I can render it anyway. Yeah. Uh, rendering hasn't been like a tough part for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, it just takes yeah. time, right? Yeah. So yeah, in this kind of studies, I'm uh, pulling back and trying to remember what I did. I, I close up all the reference that uh, I might have had open when mm -hmm. I did the studies, and I just try to like do something with with those um, uh, studies, like combine them into something unique, like mix and invent armor, new armor, like huh? samurai armor with leather armor mm -hmm. and some like weird. Assassin's Creed style, like drapery. <laughs> yeah, these are really awesome. Thanks. So I, I like that one a lot. That one's great. So Look at that expression. <laughs> she <up> psycho. <laughs> yeah, she's wild. Yeah. That's so cool. So, uh, so yeah, all those ones are out of your head then uh, after doing a study? Sorry? All those were out of your head then after you did your studies? Yeah. Awesome. Oh yeah, if you really uh, want to practice and to see like how you are improving, I I wasn't like even aware that I could do this those kind of drawings. I thought like people that design stuff have something special that allows them to design. <laughs> but no, it's all about the study again. Yeah. Like I, I thought in the beginning that 
all those people that were rendering awesome or drawing like spectacular poses. Mm -hmm. It's nothing magical. It's all about understanding. And the more you understand, the better you you will get. Yeah, and then you can combine the you know different types of armor, and, and you, what you end up start doing is you know inventing and designing uh, you know original original styles and sets of you know. Yeah, it's awesome that way. That, and that's what that's what I always tell people if they're, they're asking me how do you come up with like a different idea of something. I'm like, well, just combine like even you know on a basic level like three different unrelated things you know, and then kind of combine them all into the aesthetics of one image, and you'll probably have something original. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> awesome. So, did you have anything else you want to show? <laughs> Sorry. Did you have anything else you wanted to show? Um, no, I can't show most of the stuff that I've done this year. Mm -hmm. That bums me out when I see yeah. it online, and I've been like, I want to post stuff, but I can't. <laughs> it sucks. I know I've had quite a dry spell as well from for that same uh, reason. Also, like imagination. After I studied some like fashion, street fashion stuff. Awesome. I think it's imagination. I'm almost sure it's imagination. <laughs> <laughs> I know for sure that this dude was like imagination. I just like studied some like against some street fashion. And mm -hmm. So you yeah really you really study every almost like pretty much every aspect of uh, character design and creation. So yeah, I mean, that's because what there's I, so much you can learn. There from, is like, a lot. The people. It's super inspiring. I'm glad we had like an in, you know kind of like an insider's look at the you know all the stuff that you kind of work at. Also, this is like a study of material. Like uh, I've been playing with ZBrush and KeyShot. I would I created like this weird blob in three seconds in ZBrush, and then I mm -hmm. imported it in KeyShot, and I put like different materials on it with different HDRI maps, and I try to figure out how this material works, like, like how the horizon wraps around this kind of form. Oh wow. Um, I don't, I'm not sure if I still have the ZBrush, like, um, things, so I can show you. Yeah, that's really cool. What, so what type of, uh, material, uh, would you have that set to? Was it some type of metal, or? Oh, uh, I don't know. It's something gooey. It's <laughs> something gooey. Um. It's a liquid metal. This, like, this was on my table. I had a ball, and I wrapped around some, like, oh, no, actually, I didn't, um, I <laughs> Let me see if I have the pictures. They're really funny. I put a bag on my head and I took some pictures with the webcam. Mm -hmm. And I tried to figure out how the plastic wraps around my head. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I would try to figure out how... See, like, it's all about the values. Like, here, when it folds mm -hmm. more, multiple times or... Where, it creates like a, this kind of cylindrical fold. You will have like uh, a different value. I mean, the plastic overlaps a few times and yeah, it gets lighter. And, yeah, and then you have speculars in some areas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's all about like being paying attention to what surrounds you and try to understand it. And the way I understand it is like uh, I do a study and then I try to apply it. Mm -hmm. uh, this was again a quick study of uh, like a racing car and then I paint in like this from imagination with everything closed so I see what I can remember. So I combine also design with rendering and really I awesome. don't try to reproduce the exact the same image yeah. because I, I will probably can. <laughs> so, and also if I want to reproduce the exact same image I, I won't be dumb. I would just like open the image and try to do it. But yeah, like that's really awesome. Um, Getting the best out of, uh, the most out of your studies. Yeah. Paint weird stuff like this. Like <laughs> I ha I have a secret in Deviant Art account where I post this kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> no awesome. One knows that it's me. <laughs> really but awesome. yeah, it's just like experiment. See like I I just open Photoshop and try to see what how can I use it? How to I can I create like some weird abstract paintings? Mm -hmm. And this way I, I learned a lot. Like about the software, yep. what are the limits and all that stuff. Yeah, and sometimes it's just good to loosen up and play around like that. Absolutely. And you need to see if you can find new ways to use old brushes or 
you know, it, that type of stuff always can kind of trickle back into your, you know, your work or your more in-depth images if you kind of just, the better understanding, as you said, for kind of every facet of it, it mm -hmm. definitely helps. Awesome, man. Mm -hmm. uh, so I guess, yeah, we'll call it here. And um, again, thank you for coming on. And thank you and so much for having me. It's fun. <laughs> yeah, and you have you. If anyone wants to take, um, I I want to say, uh, uh, if you know a more in depth look at your process or you know how you go about uh, creating characters, you do have you have some Gumroad videos out as well. Uh, yeah. we, you can share on you know, and you go through a full character uh, rendering process. I I know, and then you also have your brushes out there as well too. So yeah, uh, well, it's most of them my brushes, but. In the beginning of the list, there are like other artist brushes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so, I see you have like over a hundred armor yeah. detailing brushes. <laughs> yeah. So th this was the character that you're talking about. Yes. Is it like, oh, uh, here would be like a reference shot. Uh, like I, I do this kind of collages to like, mm -hmm. get me in the mood or to see how stuff looks like. And yeah, when, once I start painting, uh, I close all these things down and try to recall or yeah that's really awesome i'm definitely i rely too heavy on it i i i'm the i just don't close it so i get stuck in these ruts so i'll definitely be taking a lot of your your advice and your study habits here and trying to uh, work them into my schedule for sure um i have some more uh stuff here i would like here on this image i started um with a software called Clip Studio Paint, where you have disposable mannequin. Awesome! Is that um, is that one? Uh, do they sell that, or is it a, one of those freemium type ones? Or it seems uh, really awesome. Yeah, they sell it, and it's really cheap. It's like thirty dollars. Yeah, that seems super helpful. Because yeah, you'll have to show the finished illustration of this because I just saw it on your Facebook, I think, yeah, um, earlier this week, and awesome. I, yeah, I was like, wow, like th that's so many different angles of characters. Yeah, so I created that composition here. Like mm -hmm. the first thing I created was a sketch. Let me see if I find it somewhere. Um, I had like a stupid line art sketch, but it was enough to. Yeah, this was the sketch. <laughs> yes. It took me like five minutes. I edited multiple sketches, mm -hmm. but this one was like okay. It has like a full vanishing point. And points out to that character, even though. I, I I called it wrong. Uh, I actually wanted the focus to be on this character, so I think I started too early. <laughs> I decided on something too early, and yeah, after that I just posed. You pose them up, pages, and then I just started painting. Like, so did you? Were you, were you able to get reference on the lighting, or was that just something you drew no, upon? No, no, no. In that software, you can put a light, but it's not. It's crap. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> Uh, I just like uh, filled those silhouettes with a black color, and then I started adding details. Like, mm -hmm. see, like they would start like that. This dude yeah, here, they all started like that. Yeah, that's good because then you can kind of just paint the light or you know whatever on top of it and see how it looks yeah. and kind of trial and error it. Yeah, and after that, it's all about like making decisions on how to make your illustration better. So, for example, here I had the hair light and the vet value of the background was light so it wasn't standing out so i mm -hmm. had to make it dark yeah so really, really good use of you know the lighting in there like how you push it how you manipulate the values yeah so yeah and i also i take shots of myself <laughs> oh yeah it help <laughs> that's awesome no that's what you got to do I saw, I think I saw some huge, I forget where I saw it, some blog post article. It just had like a list of, it's something like that, just a collection of artists, get you know, take, photographing themselves to, you know, work into the paintings, you know, for for their reference and stuff. So, yeah, that's exactly what you have to do. Also, like this is from a friend of mine. Uh, he has a, like a gum road where he has like this old, this turntable head, like as JPEG format, so you can twist. I mean, you mm -hmm. can scroll through it and see the perspective. I mean, once you know the perspective, it's hard to put the details, like eyes and stuff like that. But yeah. Most of the times for me, it's hard to figure out, okay, should I see that part of the eye there or not? Yeah. <laughs> or how the nostril or the nose would look like from a low angle like this. So it was money well spent. <laughs> oh, 
that's all I'm saying. Absolutely, yeah, I want to get one of those too. So, and then we'll also include a link to that um that software used to. So can you what do you can put figures into a scene and then like kind of pose them and stuff? Yeah, let me show you. Like, yeah, I let's check a, it out. On my Gone Road, I have like actually a tutorial where I explain this stuff. It's fr it's the free one. Oh, awesome. But yeah, let's see. Because I know it can, that that aspect of doing like a scene with like so many uh, like or you know multiple characters can be quite overwhelming for almost any level artist, and sometimes it might help just kind of figure things out. If okay, so this is like the soft how it looks like. You just need to create a new document, then drag and drop. Oh wow. Um, a model, and then you have like if you click outside, you can rotate it. Okay, oh, cool. All this kind of. I go over this like on my gamma road. It just like it's a free one, so mm -hmm. <laughs> it's my most downloaded tutorial. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you just like need to add this character, and then you can edit it. Like if you drag, oh, my computer is freaking out now. I think it's froze, frozen. Yeah, it's not working. Oh no, we broke yeah, it. I don't mean. It's probably. All. Because of the screen share thing. Yeah, that that takes it. So anyway, but you you're saying wait, can, um, can you grab the limbs? Yeah. Oh See. wow. And yeah, that's it. The only trick that you need to know is like to remember to keep the same perspective for your characters. As you can see, when I click on, on it, mm -hmm. it some, a grid appears. I don't figure it out how can I make that grid stay in the image. Mm -hmm. Anyway, the trick is to clone the character. You drag it. Oh, and then hide it and then just repose no, it? And, no, 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 you don't need to hide it. You just import the new one. And that new one is going to be in the same perspective. But now you have to... Uh, move the object using this cube uh, buttons here mm -hmm. you don't you're not allowed to rotate it anymore because it's going to create a new perspective okay so now i'm moving it in perspective like if i want to mm, let's see put it here or there see it yep. it maintains the distance oh awesome and see now it overlaps wrong so i just need to like that. And this guy looks at this guy dancing. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's a simple software. Yeah, and cool. you asked me about the lighting, if you can use it. Uh, for me, it's really crazy. Yeah, it's probably like, yeah, that just it. shades it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's nothing that you can use. Yeah, it's probably almost helpful. Not, yeah, like you, you mentioned, not to have that on because I, I think that might um, confuse. Yeah, once I'm out, I, I just need the silhouette or just yeah. like an understanding of the foreshortening of the human mind. After that, I'm going to do every possible cheat that I think that my illustration needs to in order to look better. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to show you something, but it wasn't actually a cheat because... I, I didn't know how to draw this like hand, but if I if you zoom here like from the shoulder to the elbow, this thing is too long. Mm -hmm. But I left it in there anyway. Um, in the final illustration. Yeah, it, it looks raw really well. So with that um, that Diablo, oh okay, there you go. It's like ginormous, but it was really hard to like make that hand. I wanted that elbow to be up, and I don't think it's a natural pose. No, but so, it, you took your artistic to license right there, and it. Us and she's white, and you know, yeah, so like it's evil. Anyway, <laughs> did you start that one over from scratch after that? That kind of like that color version you did, or did you just continue yeah. to refine it? Yeah, this was my starting sketch. Oh wow! I want. Uh, this was right after I quit the Deplibot, mm -hmm. and. My Epiglot job was to render the fuck out of everything to make it super like detailed. Yeah. And I said, okay, I'm going to try to learn how to be painterly because it's not working anymore. It takes too much time. So I just, I don't know. I didn't use lines for this one. I just painted with values. Mm -hmm. I still feel more comfortable when I'm like doing lines and. 
No, yeah. that, I think that that's definitely one of your best images. It's. it's... I don't think anyone has seen this all. all. No. See, I wouldn't be allowed, or I, it wouldn't be possible to do that in like an Applebot illustration. Everything had to be clear and super sharp and detailed, and with the light on them, so you can see every detail. If you zoom in, you could like. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, like detail is not everything in an image. Yeah, I know that. That's why I've 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 kind of like I, I like to look at a lot of those illustrations, but then I, I've always thought yeah, that wouldn't be really for me because there. I mean, detail is just I like doing selective detail personally too. So. Sometimes you can show if you can show more with less. I'm, I'm definitely in that type of mindset. Yeah, you know, you don't need everything rendered to a max. Just it's eye eye strain. I like you know, it's an overload, information overload. So yeah, it does take a lot of time and discipline though to get the the detail that they want. Though it's 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 kind of insane how detailed those illustrations get. Huh. But I know you know firsthand. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it took me a lot. I mean, that's why I quit. I mean, I'm going to take another side tour. I like to tell everyone, if something doesn't make you happy, fucking quit it. Yeah. Do whatever makes you happy. It's not worth working on something that you don't connect with it anymore. Absolutely. It doesn't matter how well it's paid, who's working in there. It, just, like, be happy. <laughs> and yeah. A lot of things will, like... Um, a lot of your problems will disappear. Yeah, if you just do, do what you're passionate about, and you you eventually you end up doing it well, probably. So, and then things yeah. things will just kind of fall into places. We all hope, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I think I thank you again for coming on today, and this was I a know, pleasure. It was my pleasure. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'll include the link to everything you mentioned and all your stuff, and we'll be all set to go. Thank you. And I want to mention, like, if, I don't know, I tell this to everyone, um, if you need help and you think I can help you, send me a message over Facebook or Skype. My ID is alexnegria09. Awesome. Uh, it's like... All right, so for this episode's question from Demetrio, um, I also have a problem that where some things go too heavy on the blacks and that they kind of take over the mood. Any... Any idea what makes this happen? I imagine it has something to do with the balance between light and shadow. Like there may be darks that are too darks for the level of light in a piece, but I can't really figure out exactly why that is. Um, what is your thoughts? Well, if things are looking too dark, it's probably because you just have a poor value structure or setup. Um, there's a certain there's certain different types of uh, value structures that you can apply to your image, and I'll show you several examples of kind of how that works. Um, this is the the high key what you see here this is the high key and a high key with dark accent value structure and these are just taken from typical movie stills um, as you see here in Thor everything is very light and kind of there's not a lot of contrast and it the value range kind of flows from here to here and that's fine and it works great you know whatever works for the mood and whatever you're trying to convey with your picture uh, there, there's also an alternative to this, which are the other two, you know, Empire Strikes Back and Elysium here, which is high key, but they have uh, dark accents. So to kind of draw the, you know, to, and that's just to create, you know, primary points of contrast, basically. And that's just, you know, here on the walkers and then, you know, here in the foreground, just because it's kind of dusty and there's a lot of atmosphere, it really just helps the character stand out. It, wor again, works for the scene. Um, either structure in this case works fine but you know you have to make sure the scene is readable and that's just one type of value structure um, and alternatively there's a mid-range value structure where you basically get kind of everything in the middle of the spectrum here um, there's nothing that's going to be like a pure white or or pure dark in most cases and it kind of just kind of it there's not a real high sense of contrast i mean there's contrast within the scenes but there's not like that, that stark contrast that uh, you can get on a full range scene, which I will show uh, now. All right, so this is the full range, and these you can see there's a clear difference between um, the mid and the full. And you know, there's just a much greater sense of balance between what is light and what is dark, and it's almost evenly distributed. Um, and it works, you know, great for a lot of different types of scenes, um, a lot of like kind of general moods, you know, 
or um, excel with this type of value structure. And you could break these down further and you know, like, all right, well, this is all gray. These are kind of the, the dark and there's the, you know, the light on the faces. And you know, you can simplify these even further and break them down to the three or four kind of core values. But um, yeah, this is it. Yeah, this is an example of full range. And so lastly, what I'd like to show is the, you know, the low key and the, like, like the low key and light accents. So th these are all for like the dark and kind of moody scenes that we've all kind of seen a lot of in movies and even games. Um, you know, and it's just the, the majority of the scene is, oh, I forgot to put the bar here, I'm sorry. But yeah, it's going to be kind of taking place in the dark range over here. And then there might just be like a little bit of the image that, you know, is in light. And so that is, that's just kind of like my, my two cents on setting up a value structure for your image. And, these are the type of ones I think you're directly referring to about being too dark, but um, this is what um, one of my students had asked me about this week. This was an image and he was like, how's it looking? I'm like, well, it's just too dark. Um, you know, he, he was concerned because the character's outfit is dark and he wants it to remain kind of black. But uh, yeah, it just wasn't working overall. And I first sent him this, this lineup I made, and this is not my images, any of them. So. I was like, which, what is popping out to you? You know what, if you're looking at this on a whole page of uh, thumbnails, like which one are you gonna click on to check out? Chances are it's not gonna be this one. And I think that's just because there's a severe lack of contrast that these other images present. And they all have dark, these are all characters with dark clothing. It's like, but you have to create that contrast somewhere. Contrast is everything and it creates the visual interest in your image. So I, you know, I just kind of did a two second um, adjustment on this and you know, this really kind of loose and I'd push the contrast in some of these videos but you know it lightens things up I mean you could keep the character pretty much dark but you know light in the background you know is seen in a lot of these images but you know just create that sense of contrast and um, you know if your image is looking too dark and it's not reading you know just open an image adjustments um, you know and bring up the bring up the brightness and that's all I could say so um, thank you for watching uh, this month's episode, and uh, don't forget to tell your friends and subscribe if you enjoyed it. So uh, have a great day.